today, our topic today is word problems with systems of equations, and our goal is to go over some specific types of word problems and develop a plan to be able to set up equations and solve. Uh, so we're going to be solving problems using linear systems. You may have noticed uh, a grass poster at the back of my classroom. Um, it's a checklist that will help you through any kind of solving um, solving word problems and we're going to use the grass method for this I'm going to introduce it to you and if you want a copy of that grass poster as a checklist you can let me know and I can provide you with a hard copy of it if you think it's useful but we're going to talk about the grass method right now anyway uh, for all of these problems you will need to decide what the unknown quantities are you're gonna there will be two of them declare your variables either with a let statement or in some cases we're going to use a chart and use information in the question to come up with two equations using the two unknown Known quantities. So here I'm going to go over the steps of the grass method. The first one is the given. You need to read the question and highlight important information, keywords and numbers, and in this case draw a diagram if you can. Uh, for the required, you need to have a look, state the information you're being asked to find, uh, and for this, you need to look for where there's a question mark in the question. That's usually where they ask you that kind of stuff. The analysis, you need to ask yourself, is there more to the diagram, more information you need to figure out? And can you use a formula? And here's where you're going to declare your variables by using let statements. Uh, next is the solution. You're going to set up and analyze or solve your equations, show your work, and explain your process. And lastly, in the statement, you're going to take a look and think about your answer, reread the question to see if it's a reasonable answer, and make a concluding statement, which is also called a therefore statement, or explain why you believe your answer is incorrect. Please don't just tell me that your answer, don't just say, therefore, this is the answer, if that answer is way off in left field. Tell me why that doesn't work. Um, so as you can see, they spell grass if you take a look at it. G, G for given, R required, A for analysis, S for solution, and the second S for statement. Um, so we're going to be talking about that, and for this question, our example number one, which is just kind of a number puzzle problem, um, I've give, put it in the grass chart, and you can do that too. And the question is, two integers have a sum of 18. Three times the larger number is two less than four times the smaller number. What are the integers? So what's the given? What are we given here? Well, we're given um, a sum of 18. That's important. And then it says three times the larger. So I'm going to use a mixture of math and words to, to do this. Three times the larger uh, is four, or is two less than four times smaller. And what are we being required to find? Well, two integers. You have to find those two integers. Now, for our analysis, here's where we have to decide what we're going to use for let statements. So the we're going to say let one number um, uh, how about the smaller number B S and then let the larger number B L okay so we're going to uh, let the smaller number be S and the larger number be L. Uh, and now we need to see if we can come up with some equations. There's no real formula I can use here. I just have to see if I can string these together somehow. Um, so it says they have a sum of 18. So I know that if I sum, sum means plus. So if I take the smaller and add the larger, I should get 18. And so there I have one equation. And then the second part of this, this nice question here, 
um, gives us the second equation. It says three times the larger. So three times the larger is, in math, that would be the equal to sign, two less than four times the smaller. So I do four times the smaller number, which is S, um, minus two, because that's two less than four times the smaller. So I think I've got my equations here. And I'm going to set them up for elimination. So if I'm going to take, oh, that's not equation three, that's equation two. I'm going to take equation number two and rearrange it and say uh, 3L minus 4S has to equal negative 2. Uh, that's going to be my equation 3. And then I'm going to bring down this S and L thing, except I need to get rid of one of the, equa one of the variables. So uh, when I bring this down, I think I want to get rid of the S's. I'm going to make the numbers in front of the S say 4. So if I make the number in front of the S say 4, I have to do 4 times equation 1. And I'm going to make sure that I write them in the right place. Um, so the S's need to say 4, so I have a 4S. And I'll have a 4L as well, and I'm going to make sure I write that underneath the 3L so that I lined everything up. And that's, of course, a plus in between them. And 4 times 18 is it's 72. So there's my equation 4. Now, one of the reasons why I decided to make the S's say 4 is because they had opposite signs. And if they have opposite signs, uh, I can um, add to get rid of them. And so I'm just going to add these two equations. And so I do equation 3 plus equation 4. My S's are going to go away, and I'm going to be left with 7L equals 70, which means that L equals 10. If I know L equals 10, I can sub 1, or sorry, sub L in 1. And so S plus L, which is 10, has to equal 18. That means S equals uh, 8. So let's think about it. Remember, that's part of the statement. In the statement, we have to think about this. So it told us uh, that my two numbers had to add to 18. Well, 10 and 8 certainly do add to 18. And it told me that um, 3 times the larger was 2 less than 4 times the smaller. So 4 times 8 is 32. And 3 times 10 is 30. So this this is 2 less than 4 times the smaller. So it makes sense. So that's just a little figuring in my head to, to make sure that it makes sense. And since it does make sense to me, I'm going to write my concluding statement that says, therefore, and we can use the three little uh, lines for therefore, therefore the two integers are 10 and 8. Okay, moving right along. We've got two more to get through. Uh, this is an investing and an interest problem. This says Brooklyn has $12,000 to invest. She invests some in an account that averages 6% interest for the year and one in an account that averages 7% interest for the year. If she earned a total of $770 interest by the end of the year, how much did she invest? Fast in each account. Okay, so we're given uh, we're given twelve thousand dollar investment, twelve thousand dollars to invest. Uh, we're given that there she invests some in an account that averages six percent. So we've got two accounts, two accounts, and at the end of the year, one has earned six percent and one has earned 7%. Hopefully she'd put more money in the one that earned 7%.
If she earned a total of $770 interest by the end of the year, how much did she invest in each account? So required is how much in each account. In the analysis, do we have any formulas that we need? Well, here's a formula that you need to know is that interest equals principal times rate times time. Uh, in this case, our time is one year. So basically, we just need interest equals principal times rate, uh, which means we have the rate of the investment times how much we're investing. And this is one where I'm going to set up in a chart. Because basically, we have three things across the top. We have uh, 6%, we have 7%, and we have a total. And for each of 6% and 7% and total, we have an amount invested. So we have some invested. And we don't know how much is invested at 6 or 7. So I'm going to let that be x and y, the amounts invested at 6 and 7. I do know the total amount invested because that was up here was 12,000. So I'm going to put 12,000 in my total. Now, then we have some information about interest. And they gave me a total interest. She earned a total of 770. So interest, I'm going to put here, $770. Now, I don't know anything about the interest earned at 6% or the interest earned at 7%, but I do know how to calculate it. And that's this way. Interest equals principal times rate. She got 6% of this investment. So if she got 6% of that investment, then the interest was 0.06% times that investment, times the x. And the 7%, she would get 0.07y. That's what she invested. And now we can take an equation straight out of that. If the amount invested here, if she invests some at 6, some at 7, and it has a total of 12, then we can just write that as x plus y equals 12,000. And of course, if her interest only came from these two accounts, then those two things have to add up to the 770. So 0.06x plus 0.07y equals 770. So there I've got my two equations with those two unknowns. Here's my equation 1 and my equation 2. And I just have to solve. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of those decimals in equation 2. Uh, if I multiply by 100 in equation 2, then those decimals are going to go away. So I get 6x plus 7y, and that's going to equal, i got to add two zeros to this one, 77000, 0, 0, 0, so 77,000. And there's my equation 3. Uh, and now I'm going to use my equation 1, and I'm going to um, multiply by 6 because I think I want to get rid of, rid of the x's. And so I'm going to make the x's both say 6. So 6x plus 7y, oops, sorry, 6x plus 6y, if I'm multiplying everything in equation 1 by 6, gives me 6x plus 6y equals 72 thousand dollars and there's equation four now if I want to get rid of those X's I need to take equation three and subtract equation four equation three subtract equation four and that gives me one Y equals five thousand uh, dollars so that means she invested five thousand uh, dollars that was the Y so the Y was seven percent so now to find the other one, sub y in easiest place is 1. As I know, x plus y, which we found to be 5,000, has to equal $12,000, which means that x must have been $7,000. And now that seems pretty reasonable. 
you need to think about it a little bit. This is the amount at 6% and the amount, uh, this is the amount at 6% and this is the amount at 7%. Uh, and that seems pretty straightforward. You could actually take out your calculator and calculate 6% of $7,000 and 7% 7 of $5,000 and see if that totals to $770. Um, but I'm going to write the let statement and say, there, or the therefore statement and say, therefore, she invested $5,000 at 7% and $7,000 at uh, 6%. Now we've got one more to go over. This video is going to run a little bit long, but I think we better go over it. Um, Mr. Havanga needs 200 milliliters of a solution that is 48% isopropyl alcohol for an upcoming experiment. Isopropyl alcohol can be bought in a 40% solution or a 60% solution, and Mr. Havanga has lots of each. How much of each should he mix together to get the right amount for his experiment? So we're given uh, that we, we have two uh, solutions. And the two solutions are 40% and 60%. And what we're required is how much of each to make, sorry about that, to make 48% of, or to make 200 milliliters of 48%. So we're given those two solutions. I think I'm going to do this one in a chart too. Um, we're going to set up this chart because I've got three things going on here. I've got a 40% solution, a 60% solution, and then those things are being mixed together to get a 48% solution. And I have the amounts. And the amount, I don't know what amount I'm using for 40 and 60, so I'm going to let them be F and S for 40 and 60. Uh, I do know how much of the total I want. I want a total of 200 milliliters. Now here's where you may not get, you may not know this right off the bat, uh, but the second line in here has to do with the um, amount of alcohol. Okay, this thing here, if we have 200 milliliters but it's only 48% alcohol, then less than 100 milliliters of alcohol are in there. If I could somehow separate the alcohol from the water, then I would have less than 100 milliliters of alcohol. And the way we can find out exactly how much less would be to do 0.48 times 200. So 48% of 200 is going to be uh, 98 milliliters. So we've got 98 milliliters of these other things, and I'm going to do the same thing with these, uh, with these two rows as I did with this one, and that's to find the amount of alcohol, I need to take the concentration of alcohol, which is 0.4, and multiply it by how much of the solution I have. And over here I need to take the concentration of alcohol, which is 0.6, and multiply by how much of the solution I have, which is S. And once again, once we have the chart set up, I can just go through and pick out an equation because for my amount, I only have milliliters coming from the 40 and the 60% solution. So both of those things together, F plus S, has to make up that total 200. And from the second line, the alcohol from the 0.4% plus the alcohol from the 0.6 Whoops. 
uh, from the 60 percent has to give us that, those 98 milliliters of alcohol that is in the total solution. Now I'm just going to, by the magic of uh, video, uh, solve this system. Ta-da! And we have figured out that I need 90 milliliters of the 60% solution and 110 milliliters of the 40% solution. And if we think about that for a minute, that should make sense because 48% is closer to 40 than it is to 60. Okay, 48 is closer to 40 than it is to 60, so we need more of the 40% solution, and we did get more of the 40% solution. Uh, so, we've done our little analysis here, thinking, yeah, I've convinced myself that I've got the right answer. So we say, therefore, uh, he needs 90 milliliters of 60% solution and 110 milliliters of 40% solution. And that concludes the lesson for today.